subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Something that I haven't seen in prior years, and that is the speed has been getting much better than years before in the Android space. So finally, Android phones are basically on par, if not faster sometimes than iPhones, which is pretty new for 2018. And most of 2017 also showed this trend a little bit, but mostly late 2017 going to 2018, Android phones are now just as fast as iPhones. In addition to that, in the Android space, some manufacturers have come out with phones that feel quite premium, but don't cost but one fifth the price of something like an iPhone 10. So this is a great year to buy a smartphone in 2018 if you already don't have one, or if you haven't upgraded in several years, now is a good time because there's so many options in the Android space. Also, there's various options in the iPhone space more than ever before as well. Okay, so I wanna speak on design. Well, we all know that the iPhone 10 has been a radical redesign for the iPhone, and based on Apple's latest earning calls, the hottest selling iPhone, every week in the March quarter, um, I think we're gonna see more of this design from Apple. Now, the iPhone 8 Plus trailing behind that iPhone 10 design definitely kept its you know old design from the iPhone 6 series from years ago, and uh, that says, doesn't seem to be bothering people too much as many people, millions, are still buying the 8 and 8 Plus series. So, you know, with that being said, Android definitely has caught up, I think, when it comes to design, specifically Samsung and Huawei devices are really killing it with their designs. And even some Chinese manufacturers like Xiaomi are doing some pretty nice designs these days. But the Pixel 2 XL, the pure Android experience, has a polarizing design, meaning that it's something that's very different from the norm. And a lot of people didn't like it. They call it ugly. They call it, some people like the Panda. Personally, I really like the Pixel 2 XL's design because they didn't really copy anybody's design on the market they kind of did their own thing and i really applaud when a manufacturer does that that doesn't mean i think it's the sexiest phone you can buy but i do give them credit for not following the pack however when it comes to design this has been apple's strong suit for a long time and i think if you're buying a phone in may 2018 the iphone has the more consistent design language meaning that if you go into an apple store most iphones look very similar sans the iphone 10 but that's going to change this year when apple comes out with more iphone 10 style designed phones later in september and over here if you get an android phone where you get a samsung you're going to look wildly different from a google phone you get a google phone it's going to look wildly different from an lg phone and vice versa getting an android phone your design is specific to that you know manufacturer like samsung if you get a samsung device it'll look like most samsung devices but there's millions of android phones out there that just look different if you want a more cohesive consistent experience the design language on the iphone is the way to go so right here i would call it a tie it really comes down to personal preference but for consistency i give the slight edge to the iphone next i want to talk about software updates and why they still matter now the iphone gets so many software updates that it seems like you can never keep up. You know, I didn't even download 11.3.1 for the 10 yet. I got it on the 8 Plus, but not on the 10. Android, especially on the Pixel, definitely gives you plenty of software updates. You will get them consistently, and Google doesn't mess around here on their Pixel device. But the Samsung Galaxy series devices, they give you a whole bunch of features out of the box, but you're not going to be seeing tons of software updates that frequently. As a matter of fact, you might not see a major update to the Galaxy S9 until later this year, like around the fall time. So it's crazy how many more software updates you get on a Pixel or on an iPhone device, but with Apple, all of your phones are updated. So definitely they have the edge there. And I don't think it's so much that they give you so much features. I think it's more that the customer just feels like they're being supported more. Like they gave you gave them all that money to buy an iPhone and you don't feel like they left you out to dry. You don't feel like they left you in the woods and didn't give you no software updates. You feel like they're still supporting something that you supported their company with by buying their phone. Whereas on Android, it can feel sometimes like Samsung doesn't care about the customer or you know, LG doesn't care about the customer that might change with their thin Q series. But with the Pixel, you don't have that experience. Google definitely cares about your Pixel and you will be updated there. So I still have to give it overall in software to the iPhone due to updates. And um, when it comes to customizability and elegance, that's really up to your own take. Like if you like a more polished experience or a more customization, that's a preference. But I think that just because in May 2018, Android's still lagging behind on software updates. 
the recommend goes to the iPhone here just because of that alone. So in this next area, the iPhone is a total loss here when it comes to the assistant. So Siri is pretty good. It does most of the basic things, but Google Assistant just cannot be matched on the iPhone. So you got this big, large power button over on iPhone 10. You can squeeze the Google Assistant over here. And this is much more natural than people think. It might seem silly when you're seeing it on camera, but use a Pixel 2 for a few weeks and you'll see what I mean as to how natural that feels to just start squeezing that. You definitely remember to use that quite a bit. And most Pixel 2 users, if you have a Pixel 2, let them know in the comments. They're gonna agree with me there. That squeeze feature is awesome for the Pixel 2 XL. So when it comes to assistance, I'm gonna have to give it to Android. The Google Assistant is just crushing it right now. Now, the Samsung gives you more of a convoluted experience with the Bixby and the Google Assistant, so I can't give Samsung the win here when it comes to you know the assistance, but overall, Android just having Google Assistant on all Android phones, you can disable Bixby, makes it a win for the Android platform when it comes to that regard, May 2018. So I wanna discuss the area of battery life now. Now, the iPhones have come a long way when it comes to battery life. I haven't had great experiences with them in the past, and Androids have been pretty good on battery for a while now. Now, the iPhone 10 and the 8 Plus are some seriously good, long-lasting iPhones. If you want to get an iPhone that's going to last throughout the day, those are two to take a look at. But the Pixel 2 XL still lasts longer than both of them, in my experience, as does something like the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. Now, I haven't had such good luck with the S9 Plus, but Pixel 2 XL lasts longer than both of these phones right here when you're actually using the phone. Now, standby time is still amazing on iPhones, but standby time on the Pixel 2 XL is amazing as well. Um, I actually went to bed the other day with 93% on the Pixel 2 XL, woke up, and that thing was still on 93%. I never seen that on an Android phone. So if you want the best battery, life on an Android phone, you should seriously consider the Pixel series because, you know, Google's doing some stuff in the background to make sure that Pixel battery just lasts and lasts and lasts. And that comes, comes down to the optimization when you do get a pure Android device here. So when it comes purely to battery life, I still have to give the win over here to the Android side, May 2018. Now, I just want to quickly brush over security, encrypt it out of the box. iPhones are some of the hardest phones to break into, to hack. Look at any studies online. Just do a quick Google search. Which phone has better security, iPhone or Android? You're going to see iPhone winning on almost every article that you do come across. Studies have shown that the Android system is just a little bit more vulnerable than the iPhone system. Now, the Pixel 2 XL, with its continuous security updates and patches straight from Google is probably one of the more secure phones you can buy. So I wouldn't be too worried about using a Pixel 2 XL or a Samsung device with the built-in knocks, but I'm talking about all those other littler manufacturers, you know, or cheaper phones. That's really where you're going to be a little bit vulnerable on the Android side of things, not so much on the flagship end, but still the iPhone overall, you can buy an iPhone at any price point and you could rest assured that the security game is gonna be strong here. So if you're going straight for, I want a secure phone, I don't wanna be dealing with viruses and I'm, I'm afraid of those things, then you probably wanna get an iPhone, you're gonna be happier there. Now let's quickly brush over hardware. What I mean by that is screen size, quality, cameras, and uh, specs basically. And here's where Android is still ahead. So Android still has better specs, you know, spec for spec. If you compare an iPhone to an Android phone, you're gonna find better specs on a spec sheet for Android phones. But does that really matter in the real world? Not really because of the optimization again of iPhone really does keep up with the Android side even though it has quote unquote lesser specs. Sans the A11 Bionic, the A11 Bionic chip is better than pretty much any Android phone. But spec for spec, the iPhone 10 is definitely really caught up to Android phones. But you know, an 8 Plus might seem inferior on paper. It's still really not because the processing power is at MacBook level on the 8 Plus. And overall, I think if you're just looking for pure specs, of course, it's going to be the Android phone. It's going to offer you more features and specs in one package than an iPhone will. Let's quickly talk about resale value. Now, I just got this red iPhone 8 Plus due to the fact that I sold my white one. Now, when I sold my white iPhone 8 Plus, this thing sold in 20 minutes. That's how fast I sold and flipped this iPhone 8 Plus white that I had to get this red one because I really do like the red color better and I just basically swapped it out, sold the white one, got the red one. Now, basically, that goes to show you in 20 minutes how you know in demand iPhones really are. I mean, these things are hot commodities even here in 2018, even though many people say the iPhone's getting lame, it's getting old, who cares really about iPhone? A lot of people do say these things 
the sales don't really show that. Now, if you go to resell a Galaxy S9 in like two years, you're going to lose like its value is just going to plummet. Like already you can get a 64 gig S9 for like $200 cheaper than launch price. And it's only been out two months. Now, imagine one year later, three, four hundred dollars. That's a hard pill to swallow when you are using, you know, you are going to pay about 800 bucks for a Samsung now. And then when you go to sell it, you're only going to get about three, four hundred bucks back. That doesn't feel very good. Whereas when you t you buy an iPhone a year later, you can get five, six hundred dollars back. You feel like, oh my God, I basically just sold the phone for the same price I bought it for. Well, I can get this new phone for not much more. So resale value hands down to the iPhone in May 2018. So I want to talk about another category, ease of use. I think that the iPhone is still the easier phone to use. It's still, again, some people find Android easier to use depending if they're used to a certain platform, but I still think iPhone is easier to use than Android once you actually get into it and start using it it's just a grid of icons you go into settings your settings are right there there's nothing really to do you just change your icons around change your wallpaper you're done use your phone that's iphone over here on the android you get into the system you start using all these features you're going to get lost in the settings menu on a samsung device guaranteed if you're a first time samsung user over here on the pixel things are a little more simple but still it can get a little bit convoluted if you start downloading launchers themes things like that which any android phone can run One one easy win for the Android phone is cost of entry. I'm going to go back to this Honor 7X. You can get a premium feeling Android phone for one fifth the price of an iPhone 10. Also, you can get these other premium Android phones for still way less than an iPhone. So the cost of entry to get into the Android ecosystem and still getting great hardware is much lower than the iPhone. But keep in mind that resale value. So if you've been paying attention to this whole video, it's basically a 4-4 draw with one tie amongst all the areas we talked about. But I have to give the iPhone the win here in May 2018 for one critical aspect, and that is support. If you can go to any Apple store, you're likely going to get support on your iPhone if anything does go wrong. And that is one critical factor that I think every other Android manufacturer that is at least competing with Apple should take a look at. Specifically, I think Google needs it a lot because they're not really, you know, selling a lot of phones right now. So it'd be nice if they got some stores out there that would really, you know, push that forward. Samsung, again, they have stores, but just not too much in the US over here. And that would help them out a lot as well. But the support factor on iPhone is just crushing it right now. And for that reason, I do give the iPhone a slight edge over Android in May 2018. Now, I've done videos like this before, and this is always subject to change. This is just how I feel in May 2018. But this probably is not going to change for the foreseeable future, at least until later this year when we see what the Note 9 does. If Samsung can really beast on this notch game and come out with an all screen, be the first to come out with an all screen S10, that will be amazing. But until then, this is how I feel at this current point. I will give you another update maybe six months down the road on the same kind of topic here. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. And one bonus mention, iPhone seems to be the leader when it comes to the phone game right now. And here's why. Except for Samsung, who's anti-Apple, basically. They're, everybody seems to be copying, you know, Apple's notch and they think it's cool like oh one plus six is gonna drop the notch uh, let's see how consumers respond to this LG G7 thin Q just announced this morning it's got a notch p20 pro has got a notch so I do love the p20 pro but at the same time you know Apple comes out with the notch like this this kind of you know trend setting notch right here and all these Android manufacturers follow so it really shows who is the leader here in the smartphone market if you're looking up to this company to make your own phone and that lack of innovation that lack of ambition is very disappointing considering that you know android phones in the past seemingly were always like pushing the boundaries when it comes to specs hardware now a lot of them are looking at apple and thinking that they can't design their own phone so that's kind of disappointing to be honest with you if you found this video helpful enjoy